60 KTRS. Uh, Nick Pister is uh, joining us. Do we have Nick Pister? I'm here. Nick Pister, good morning this morning. Welcome back to the Big 550 KTRS. Uh, you are on fire, my friend. A couple of great stories. First, let's talk about this recorder of deeds story. Uh, Shannon Carpenter. Uh, sh- I thought I thought she I thought she resigned in in disgrace for hiring a relative. Well, she did. She resigned in July. The the statute requires that if you violate the state's nepotism statute, uh, which she had hired her great nephew to do work in the recorder of deeds office for a summer job, that you must vacate the office. But she got lucky because her uh, term was actually expiring anyway. So she stayed on the ballot, ran for re-election, won with 61% of the vote in November, and came back into office after about a a six-month hiatus uh, in January. So she's back. And so uh, with with that, in that process of resigning uh, and returning to office, she's been able to collect her pension. And now she's able to collect her full $97,000 salary plus her pension uh, while still being in office and not being retired at all. How much is, is her, her pension? Her pension is about $4,200 a month. So uh, she, she's making close to $50,000 extra a year that she wouldn't normally have made uh, because this, this actually hiring her great enough to be violating the state's deficit statute has actually turned out to be pretty good for Sharon Carpenter. How much does she make in her salary as a recorder of deeds? She makes $97,000 a year. So she's making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, part of her retired benefits and her current salary. Correct. All right. What does the recorder of deeds actually do in the city of St. Louis, Nick Pister? <laughs> well, they're they're in charge of all the death records. They're in charge of all the vital records. They're in charge of birth certificates, marriage certificates. They keep a lot of record keeping. Not typically a job that people would think that you uh, need, you know, a, a car. So that's become the the latest issue is that that she's laid someone off. Uh, and in that same process, is now uh, seeking a, a seven hundred dollar a month uh, stipend for a vehicle or a brand new city vehicle, uh, whichever uh, works easiest for them. And so, it's not something you would think somebody would need a car to be driving around uh, doing uh, birth certificates. It's something that's all done at city hall. So, uh, yeah, but that's the current situation. So, so now she's complaining because she gets a car and she hasn't been given a car. Correct. She's she's upset that nobody uh, contacted her and said, you know, Sharon, you know, uh, these other elected officials have cars. You know, do you need your car back? She originally had a car. She had to turn it in uh, when when she was off on her brief hiatus from office. Uh, now she's going to get a new car, or if, if they approve the seven hundred dollar a month uh, lease for a vehicle, which seven hundred dollars would pay for a pretty nice car. Who who gives her? I mean, who <laughs> who authorizes her the money? I mean, wouldn't she just get it? Or who do, well, who? There, there, there's, a, there's a capital committee that, that handles the budget, and so essentially they have to place it into the budget. So she can't actually do this until the budget is uh, ultimately goes into effect in July. So she's having to wait it out. But she is seeking retroactive payment uh, to January uh, for, for a $700 a month uh, lease stipend for a vehicle. Why would a recorder of deeds need a car, first of all? Well, I think some of this will bring into examination uh, the need for some of these elected officials to have cars. Other elected officials have them as well. The treasurer of the city of St. Louis has one. Uh, I believe uh, a bunch of others, uh, I think the collector of revenue has one. Uh, the license collector has one, which she mentioned in her letter. So I think it does bring an examination. It, it is sort of an old way of doing things. It's sort of that old-fashioned bureaucratic way of uh, city halls and all throughout the country of, you know, where everybody just sort of gets these perks and these cars without any real examination of why they actually need them because a recorder of deeds, I, I, I'm not exactly sure uh, what argument would be made that, that they actually need to be it. Does the mayor of St. Louis get a car? He does not get a car or a car siphon, although he does get a, a, a city police car or access to city police, uh, unmarked city police vehicle that's driven by a, a or a, a un, not uniformed city police officer. So he does have a driver and things like that. So he doesn't need a car because somebody drives him. Correct. Yeah. I believe he has his own personal vehicle that he pays for. Yeah. Uh, $700 for a car a month, that's a really nice car. Yeah, and I, I don't know what kind of car she's driving or what kind of car she's planning on getting or, or how that's going to go. Uh, 
but I, I think the seven hundred dollars a month includes gas and, and things like that, and upkeep insurance and things like that as well. Yeah. Now, Nick Pister with uh, stltoday.com, dot uh, com. You went and spoke with her, and it seems like from your article. Uh, she was very forthcoming and was very frank and open and honest, saying uh, she gets a car and she wants a car. Yeah, she's always been that way, even through the the, uh, the nepotism situation and all that. She's always been pretty uh, upfront about you know what what she's done or why she's doing it. Um, I, I think it's, to most people, it is this sort of throwback to the old patronage system uh, that that's been dying in a lot of places that seem to be alive and well here. Yeah. Did, did, what about her, her great nephew or her great, uh, uh, the woman, the man, the boy she hired, does he still have a job? No, no, he's, uh, he, he did summer work. He's no longer there. She, uh, her je- deputy chief of staff also approved a, a $100,000 office remodel for the contract that went to her son. Um, so there's a, just a lot of stuff being passed around, and uh, there is a state audit looking into it, but it hasn't come out yet. I don't know what yeah, so at, at at least the at least the nepotism uh, they sniffed that out. At least she's not hiring yeah. relatives. Correct. Yeah, and right. the laid off worker. It, it seems like you know. Um, did she give a reason as to why she was let go? She just said budgetary concerns. She couldn't get into it. She said it was a personnel matter outside of that. So she's saying budgetary. So somebody lost their job, and she's making one hundred and fifty, and then demanding <laughs> right. demanding a car. A car. Right. Yeah. Right. Boy, maybe I should quit my job and become a recorder of deeds, <laughs> and then hire a relative. Nick, if I ever if, if I ever become a recorder of deeds, you're my first phone call. I want to hire you. I will give you a recommendation. There you go, Nick Pister. Good work. Thanks for for checking in. Thank you. You got it, uh, Nick Pister. One of the good ones yeah. at the yeah. St. Louis Post Dispatch, and uh, unbelievable story about the recorder of deeds, Sharon Carpenter, getting fifty thousand dollars in retirement benefits on top of a ninety-seven thousand dollars salary, on top of now she wants her stipend for her car retroactive back to January, and letting go an employee, yeah, and having to let go of an employee because they don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a story. Mm-hmm. 8.30 here, Big 550 KT.